Justin Moore. This is my dirt on B105. It is time for your B105 buzz brought to you by East Central Energy, member owned, a homegrown community focus since 1936. <sighs> Gotta talk about this. Yet another scam. So there is an IRS scam that has been bugging some residents in Wisconsin. Now, this happened in Prescott, Wisconsin. But since it's already been circulating there, could happen anywhere in Wisconsin and could even cross state lines into Minnesota. So nothing groundbreaking here, but as somebody who, I don't want to say I don't understand taxes, but they scare me. I'm always scared I'm doing something wrong or, you know, that I'm going to get a call from the IRS saying I owe money and I would not know any better. Okay, so that's kind of what this is. Basically, scammers are calling people in that area saying this is the IRS. And, of course, they can make the text look legit and they can make the caller ID look legit, all that, because this is text and phone call. And basically, they're like, you owe back taxes if you don't pay them today and, like, make it right right now. Uh, we're going to issue a warrant for your arrest. So, obviously, it's a scam. You can read about it. B105country.com, like I said, it seems like you'd be like, okay, well, why would someone fall for that? Well, you know, some of us are scaredy cats, and I would not even know if I owed back taxes. I don't want to say that. I'm, like, incriminating myself, but not because I didn't do anything wrong, but you know what I mean. Like, it's, it's hard to keep track of that stuff. So, like I said, read more about that on our website. And then I thought this was interesting. Minnesota was just named one of the most fun states. So, I mean, I think Minnesota's fun. But I guess it depends on what you think is fun, right? So Wallet Hub did this study. We were named the ninth most fun state for 2024. Basically, they looked at like how many performing arts theaters there were, arts, entertainment and recreation venues, um, just like a, a lot of things like that. Restaurants, movie theaters, golf courses, country clubs, fitness centers. And Wisconsin came in at number 16. Wisconsin's really fun. Can't deny that. So... You can read more about that, B105Country.com and your B105 app. Coming up, Eric Church, Lady Wilson, Dustin Lynch, and more. Billy, as Ken would say on B105, it is time for Lauren's Country Lowdown. You know, he's on a first-name basis with a few of these country stars. So let's talk about Post Malone because, well, everybody's been talking about him. He's been the talk of the country music world because he not only had a smash hit with Morgan Wallen, I had some help, but... He really dove headfirst in, into this whole country music thing, and he just released F1 Trillion, his country music debut. It came out Friday, and then he released the long bed version, which had extra songs. And the consensus, for the most part, there are haters, of course, because there always are, is that it is an incredible album and that, you know, he belongs in country music. And that was very evident with his Opry debut as well recently because he really respects the artistry and the history of it all and all that. But it looks like people just really do love it. Um, it is aiming to be his number one debut on the Billboard 200, his first number one album since 2019. Now his album, F1 Trillion, already went gold last week before it was even out. That's how many people were listening to it and pre-ordering it and whatnot. And now it's set to sell 200 to 225,000 more copies in its first week, which it hasn't even been yet. So I'm just loving it. Um, you can see clips from his Opry debut and read about the album, all that, B105Country.com. I hope he's not like doing one country album and then moving on. I hope he stays in it for a while, maybe forever, but I won't get greedy. But Luke Combs, he just did a radio interview. And I was talking about this earlier in the hour. He really does seem to be like the most humble person. So basically, in this radio interview, he was asked if he was going to be bringing his kids on tour. And he said he doesn't think so. Basically, he said that he wants them riding bikes and not tour buses. Now, he says, I can afford a nanny to come with us and help us out. Or, you know, if Nicole wants to come on the road for a few days. But he says he doesn't want... To use any of his star power when it comes to raising his kids. He says, I want them to have a normal childhood. It was our choice to have kids and bring them into this life. And I am not going to, you know, just like basically let them see the downsides of fame. And he's like, I'm going to be there for them. He's like, I don't want to hire a nanny. I want to be there with my kids. I have the privilege of doing so. So not only did he say like, I don't want them touring with me. They need to have normal childhoods. But he's like, I, I will sacrifice what I need to sacrifice in my career even if it means not touring as much, even if it means Nicole's not out on the road and the kids aren't on the road because he's like, that is 
that is what they need for a normal childhood. And he's like, they didn't ask for this crazy life. We gave it to them. So I just thought that was sweet. And then he said, you know, Garth Brooks stepped away at the height of his career to be a dad. And he said, people thought he was nuts. And now Luke says, I could probably walk away if I had to. So got to love how humble he is. And you, you just got to love him. And then last but not least, we'll squeak this in here quick. Lainey Wilson, she has a jewelry line coming out. Um, it's in collaboration with Kendra Scott. It's the Whirlwind Jewelry Collection in celebration of her album. So you can pre-order it this Friday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. while supplies last. And it's very laney, you know. It's very country, if you will. So if you're a big laney... Okay, here we go. 710 laugh off. By the way, uh, Kevin sent me a message. Okay. And he said that look into Beard Brand Utility Wash and Utility Softener for your shampoo conditioner needs. Okay. I'll have to check that out. There's a guy one after all. Look at you. I just so beard, beard wash. Like you 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 wash your beard, right? Do you use soap? We can talk about this later. You don't have to talk about it, right? Okay, yeah, no. But yeah, okay. you have to wash your beard. Good to know. I won yesterday. I want you to go first. Lauren. Did you know my dad was a conjoined twin? His brother was my uncle on my father's side. <laughs> that's a, that's a, <laughs> Are you okay? You're laughing know. at your own joke. I know, that's funny. Though. Okay. Did you laugh? Um, I smiled. Oh, well, there's the first. Ken, did you hear about the shrimp that was really sick? Or prawn jokes? <laughs> he had bronchitis. How many of these do you have? have this is like, kind of a problem. Like My gosh. If you find a theme, you got to go should, with it. Maybe you should put them away and like bring them back later at some point. I have other okay. jokes right. too. Okay, okay. But I know that you like prawn jokes. Like you laugh at them. It's a weak spot, so. Lauren, I stole William Shatner's hairpiece at a convention. And I plan to sell it, but don't judge me. I've got bills to pay. <laughs> a very niche joke. I'm smiling. I'm smiling. I'm really putting it all out here. Okay. Can I dug, you dug, we dug. I mean, this poem isn't beautiful, but it's very deep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, I think you saw my... Okay, no, this, here, this is it. This is it. This is it. Lauren, what did the beaver say when his ho- house caught fire? Hot damn. <laughs> okay. I knew it was something with a damn, but like the way you committed to that. I've committed to all of them today. But that, the acting that you just had to do. Hot damn. Yeah. Always wanted to see a beaver in the wild. You haven't? Mm-mm. You need to get out more into the wild, I think. I'm literally outside every day. You gotta go where the beavers hang out. I know. Where is that? Lakes, rivers, dams, creeks. Yeah, but I'm at those places. I don't Look see Look for them. trees that have been gnawed. Okay. And then there'll be a beaver around. Okay. We have them at the cabin. All right. And you have moose up there. And yeah, well, I'm a bunch just, of wildlife. I'm gonna, okay, so go where the well, animals are. Well, here we woke up and all the trees in our shoreline were gone. I'm not kidding. <laughs> the beaver took them down. It's building a nice house. Yeah. Congratulations, Ken. Hot damn. All right. 713 B105. We've got uh, your brain teaser question up next on The Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren. B105 Breakfast Club, Ken and Lauren. Okay, here we go. We got your brain teaser question, your chance to win some Papa Murphy's. Mm-hmm. So I'll get you hooked up right now. Okay. So I'll answer this My question. My computer froze. I got it. Okay, you got this. 31% of people say they always take this wherever they go. They now take... it's loaded. Thanks for the play by play. 31% <laughs> of people say they always take this wherever they go. Hold the can there them. for a second. Do you do this? Mm, no. Probably because I don't ever have... If I had one available all the time, I would. I try to do this, but then sometimes I'm too lazy. Yeah. But there is a tip out there, a financial tip that said you should bring this everywhere you go so you don't pay Spend for it so it adds us. up. Yeah. yeah, it does. Yeah, so 31% of people say they always take this wherever they go. What is it? 727-B105. Call now. Good luck. You can win some Papa Murphy's prize pack. Don't overthink it. Yep. 727-2105 with Luke Combs. B105 Breakfast Club, Ken and Lauren. Okay, here we go. Your brain is your question. You went to Papa Murphy's. You get this right. 31% of people say they always take this with them wherever they go. What is it? Okay, 31% of people. Mm-hmm. Good chunk of people. So uh, take some guesses. See what we got. Hi, B105. What do you think? Uh, the water? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That was easy, I guess. Look at that. Bottle of water. What's your name? I wasn't 100% on that one. Um, Austin. Austin, do you take water with you wherever you go? Uh, just about. Yeah, I would, except I never really have a fresh bottle. My kids drink, go through them all so fast, you know. I guess we should be saving the environment and using our own reusable get water bottle. Get a Stanley. Bottle. Right, got to get your Stanley. <laughs> and, exactly. And Lauren's 14, 20 of them. <laughs> I have right. like two. Okay. Anyways, right. Austin, congratulations. You have Papa Murphy's. Can you hang on a second? Yep. Congratulations, Austin. There you go. We'll do it again tomorrow. I'm going to put that on my list for 2025 New Year's resolutions. What, to bring your Stanley everywhere? Yeah, because then you don't have to go buy water. Don't you already bring it everywhere? No. Have you ever seen me with it here? No. Well, I guess I'd nice to see with all the other tumblers. Mm -hmm. I guess there's a difference. Stanleys and tumblers. There is. There really is. How many tumblers do you have? Um... A lot. I got rid of a lot of them. One. I got rid of a lot of them oh, and the haven't move. bought one. Yeah, so oh, I haven't bought one for a really long time. So Look at that growth. Personal growth. Love that. 728 B105. Look at your weather forecast coming up next. And then Lauren's love advice coming up at 740. There's a new way people are meeting on a website that's not designed for dating. Yep. But it's working out for people. Exactly. We're going to discuss here coming up on B105. <laughs> You want to five Breakfast Club, Ken and Lauren? Okay, we've got Lauren's love advice, and we're interested about this because people are finding love on a website that's not designed for dating, and Lauren's going to clue us in on it. Uh, correct. So, apparently, the new thing in 2024, especially over the past few months, is a shocking number of people have landed dates on LinkedIn. Okay. There are a few different, like, surveys and studies that have been done about this. So, first and foremost, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense, and I also want to preface this by saying LinkedIn has come out and said this is a professional website and if you're making advances towards people unwanted advancements or you're you know trying to like hit on them or whatever there can be repercussions so LinkedIn says like no that's not what it's used for we don't want people to feel uncomfortable but a lot of people are finding love on there for a bunch of different reasons first and foremost if you're a young professional you know, I mean, I don't think I've updated my LinkedIn page for like years. I don't even have a LinkedIn page. Or if anything. you're a serious young professional and you use that for marketing or, or whatnot, you'll find like-minded people, you know, that you'd be compatible with. Another thing that's mm. happening is matchmaking companies that are on LinkedIn are setting people up as well. And there's a few different examples of this where it's ended well. And I think even when one couple got engaged because a matchmaking company on there would be like, hey, I found somebody else on LinkedIn. I think that you would be like a good fit for them or whatever. So that's the second reason people are finding love on LinkedIn. But also I think people are just getting sick of like, I don't know, Tinder, Bumble, all that stuff. They probably are just like, okay, I'm over this. Although there are like good stories that have come out of it and whatnot, but people are like, okay, well, at least if I find someone on LinkedIn, you know, it's a little more professional. I know a little bit more about them. You can't really lie on there um, like you could, but, you know, you're trying to find a job and network with people, so that wouldn't be smart. So that's kind of the way things are going. Now, like I said, LinkedIn says, uh, don't do that, but they can't really do anything to stop it per se, so... Well, that's wild. I was trying to think of how many different dating websites there are now, because there's a ton, right? And so I did this. I was like, okay, so the the younger crowd, is they still doing Tinder? Is that still big? I have no idea. I don't know, because the uh, most popular, I just from Forbes is saying here, is uh, eHarmony still. Really? Well, for people that are over 40. That's interesting. Then there's a Date My Age. Huh? Date My Age. Okay, I've never heard of that one. Uh, match is still big on there. Okay. Our time. I've never heard of that. Never, well, that's because it's for singles over 50. Our oh. time, because it's our time now, finally. That's cute. Yeah. I want them to find love. Right. So there you go. It's, uh, but go, we're LinkedIn. Go on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Change I that guess. profile picture. I don't have a LinkedIn. And everyone, I mean, everyone has a great LinkedIn profile picture because it's all like professional headshots, you know, from your job. So professional headshot from me. I don't really have any. We got them taken here a few years ago. It's always when we're staring directly into the sun. Yeah, it was like the hottest day ever, and then we had to walk like two miles. It's like, okay. A sweaty and blotchy skin. Here we go. Put that up there. Yeah. On my LinkedIn. uh, We're good. You're married, so you're good. You don't need to worry about this. You ever date anybody you work with? Uh, No. (laughs) No, I have not. That was a huge risk when I dated my wife. 
That could she have ended here. badly. That could have ended badly. And then, uh, I died. then I told her, I think right before we got married, it was right after we got married, somewhere around there. I was like, you need to get a different job because we can't have all our eggs in one basket here. That's smart. And it worked out. But then you could have seen her so much more because she would just be working at the front. Uh, yeah. We'll keep moving here. <laughs> Leave Healthy rice. Enough. B105, it's Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren. We just tried calling Lauren's mom. Um, no. No luck. Just a bunch of ringing. No, but. she calls me back like four days later. <laughs> and she'll be like, hey, what's up? I'm like, I don't remember now, but thanks. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, here's the lies that your parents told you in the 90s that you completely believed. Okay. Um, that turned out aren't true, which some of them I thought actually still, you know, the, the, it just stays with you from your childhood, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, number one, drinking coffee stunts your growth. Yes. That never stopped me, though. I mean, I wasn't drinking it as like a child. Maybe that's true then. Am I okay? (laughs) Really? Short joke. Sorry. 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 Not even short. Anyways, what's the next one? Okay. Number two, if you pee in a pool, the water changes colors. Yes, I thought that. I thought that too. I thought it like it would turn like purple or something. I'm fine with that lie though, because like I don't want to pee in a pool. pool. Yeah, we don't need that. This one, uh, I, I, some people believed. I never was told this one. Chocolate milk comes from brown cows. I don't know if I've heard that one. Yeah, well, I've heard like, that one, but I know. Well, I, I mean, know I don't think that that was like a lie that I was told. This one terrified me as a child. A watermelon will grow in your stomach if you swallow the seeds. Correct. I was horrified. Right. I, I think I've still. I think I passed that one on. I think the generational trauma has continued. <laughs> nice. I told my kids that. <laughs> nice. Um, if you swallow gum, it takes seven years to digest. Yes, that one freaked me out so bad, but yet I still did that. So I don't know. Really? And why did I do that? That's weird. I know. Um, you're not supposed to swallow gum, but if you no. do, it's not a big deal. If you swallow a bunch of it, it might be a big deal because it is indigestible. You can't digest it. But it doesn't take seven years. Yeah, no. It, it'll pass through. I haven't done it since I was like a kid. But. Well, that's good. If you were going around eating and swallowing gum now as an adult, we'd have an issue. <laughs> We might have to have an intervention there. Right. Number six, it's illegal to drive with lights on inside the car. Like yes. the dome light. Yeah. Is I that was, not illegal? Not, not technically in the law books. Okay. It's distracting. Then they, I mean, you could be pulled over, I right. guess, but I, it's probably not a great idea. This one I heard all the time, sitting too close to the TV will ruin your vision. Mm-hmm. That's not true. I always had terrible vision, so... I don't know if that... Maybe it is true. Yeah, maybe it is true. Maybe it's not. Or like... um, But I wasn't phased. I was always told watching TV in the dark was going to ruin your vision. Yeah. You know? It's my favorite thing to do now. (laughs) (laughs) Cracking your knuckles will give you arthritis. That's another lie our 90s parents told us. Mm -hmm. Um, There's no proof that arthritis will happen uh, medically, but they said it can actually reduce your grip strength. So you may not want to do that. But it's not because of arthritis. And uh, okay, two more. Number nine, I believe this until right now. You have to wait 30 <laughs> minutes after eating to swim. Is that not true? Apparently not. What? Because I thought you were always going to cramp up or something. If yeah, you, I thought it, it was, that, yeah. was something like you, you, you were digesting and, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. And then the last one is, which I think I took to heart because <laughs> I don't have one. You won't find a job if you have a tattoo. That's funny. We were told that I can't, like, well, you can't get tattoos. You never have a job. I never really needed a tattoo, but, uh, you know, now, just about everybody, it's kind of weird if you don't have a tattoo, isn't it? We should go get tattoos. <laughs> just kidding. You and I? <laughs> just kidding. My dad and I are going this year. That's so cute. Oh, my gosh, getting, that's cute. We're getting matching tattoos. That's adorable. No. So cute. Can wow. I... Just come watch. I don't know. Okay. It sounds adorable, but then you see me and him together with needles around. It's probably not yeah, going to be. Yeah, I'm going to stay far away from yeah. that. But um, I just learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, Some yeah. of these lies I believed until this very moment. So thank you, Ken. Right. Getting to the bottom of things. 757 on The Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren. Dustin Lynch, Chevrolet on B105. It's Northland's number one for new country. It's Ken and Lauren. And have you ever had any of your luggage go missing in all your travels? No, but it's a fear I have. Usually you just take a carry-on anyway, don't you? I don't know. I cuz I get I get stressed out when I have to put that up above by myself when there's a long line. So no, I I get free bag check usually, so Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, here's a story <laughs> that comes out of Everett, Washington. 2,000 pounds of frozen fish missing after a flight diversion. Now, why are we is this somebody's luggage or is this like well it's their car the, that's well the no, cargo well it's their, it's their it's their they paid for it to be brought back they went uh, a group of friends went to alaska on a fishing trip they do this every year and they bring back 
all their mm. fish frozen. You know, that's a common thing. Right. But uh, the airline lost the fish. Yeah, that's that's not great, especially because they traveled there just to do that. And I know... Right, thousands of dollars worth of fish. Yeah, and I, I know how serious these things are. Right, and they said they get a voucher for from Alaska Airlines for hotel meals and Uber back to Seattle, but they never received any vouchers and they never got anything about their fish. And they don't know where the fish... Here's the thing. Not only is it bad for these guys that are missing their fish, uh-huh. it's bad for whoever finds the fish. Yeah. Because that's gonna not be... going to smell good. No. I'm surprised they can't just trace back the smell. You would think it would be there somewhere. But, uh, yeah, they, they lost a bunch of fish. And, uh, yeah, they were given a $100 voucher for the delay and the issue. Well, that's not... That's, that's a, not enough. That's, as they that's call not it, enough. a slap in the face. Yeah, I like that they're trying to do a little something to make it right. But $100, that doesn't get you very far. I've forgotten bait in my bait bucket before. And that has stunk up my garage like you would not believe. I can't imagine what 2,000 pounds of fish would smell like somewhere. I've had similar things happen at my house. Oh, yeah, you do have like a, you pretty much has a bait shop running around in your kitchen. It's true. You know, with your sleepwalking fiance. It's true. What if he grab, actually sleepwalks with a bait sometime? I mean, I guess he can do whatever he wants. Post Malone on B105. It's Posty here at the Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren. And we got some angel. Lauren, Mm -hmm. give us a good story besides the rotting fish. Yeah, so this is unusual but also amazing. Our angel today is from Texas. Her name is Brianna, and she has accidentally started a squirrel resort in her backyard. Okay. So... What's a squirrel resort? Okay, so she has a big backyard, whatever. There's lots of squirrels, and they... We're recently going through like a heat wave in the part of Texas where she lives. So she noticed one day she left her fan on outside and that there was like a few squirrels that were plopped down in front of it, like really, really hot. So they were cooling off. So then she's like, okay, I'm going to, you know, leave this fan on whatever because the squirrels are hot. So then she posted TikToks of it. People thought it was cute. Companies started sending her fans (laughs) and we're like, okay, you know, use this to help the squirrels. And now it's grown so big that she has little resting areas for them, little pools, ice cube stations. Like, she's just got it all going on in her backyard for these squirrels. So, I mean, goals. You know, this is this reminds me of uh, so my kids, as everybody's kids do, watch YouTube <laughs> all day long. That's uh-huh. what they're watching YouTube. And one of their YouTube people they like is Mark Rober. And he's a, he's a YouTuber. He's also an engineer. And he's actually, you know... I would, I would argue that you actually learn something from watching him, so I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. But he had a backyard Olympics where he had squirrels in his backyard and he built them houses and stuff and he had like it. different things that they would do, like a whole Olympic arena for squirrels that were neighborhood squirrels. I'm doing it. Are this you? is my calling. Well, she also said that her sons are three and ten and they find it therapeutic and then they help with it as well. So, I you know, you. but no, I'm obsessed. I want a squirrel resort. There's we can't one squirrel. do that because of our dog. Yeah, there is one squirrel in the front yard. We named him, and he has he lives in the hole in our front yard tree, and I talked to him, but I want a squirrel. You should put a little sign with his name on it next to the hole. I should. Yeah, I can't reach not? that high, but it is so cute. Get a ladder. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Great advice. Well, I can come over and help if you want. But Thank you. Uh, Let's do this. Sure. Let's sure. do it.